Hi, this is Mark Davidson with Canfield USA. You know, the battle against COVID-19 continues and it seems like sometime we're fighting a, uh, a war against an unseen enemy. And the enemy that we need to defend ourselves are respiratory droplets that an individual who's potentially infected with COVID can expel when they breathe or cough or sneeze. And now these categories, the, the droplets come in two broad categories. One category is the very large respiratory droplets. And the other category are the smaller droplets, which are often referred to as droplet nuclei or sometimes aerosols. Now, all the health agencies agree that large respiratory droplets are our primary problem. Now, we call these large, but they're far too small for us to see. But in the microscopic world, these are, in fact, very, very large. In fact, they're so large that the natural buoyancy of the air can't support them, and they sink down and they land on various surfaces. Now, our defense against those is something that we're all familiar with social distancing, respiratory mask, hand sanitizers, and things like that. Now, the small ones, on the other hand, there's a growing school of thought that perhaps they have much more influence on infection rates increasing than was thought before. In fact, a couple hundred scientists sent a uh, letter to the WHO asking them to investigate this very thought. Now, these smaller droplets are so small that the natural buoyance of the air cannot, they, they, uh, they will stay afloat. The buoyancy will hold them up. And when they suspend it in the air, they're, of course, they're influenced by air currents and they can move all around the room. So we need a better defense against those smaller nuclei and aerosols. And that's what we want to talk to Campbell's Martin Gravel about today. There's an item out there which we would call an in-room air purifier. And Martin has some experience with these products. So Martin, if you would, introduce us to yourself real quick to get this started off. Hey Mark, pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I've been with uh, Campfield Air Filtration for 14 years as a uh, filtration consultant professional. Um, effectively, I've been doing a lot of work with life cycle costing to try to help people select the right air filters to get uh, or have the ability to do more with less. Um, and lots of experience with absolute HEPA filtration and ALPAs that can remove harmful fine particles, you know, in the 99.99999% range. Yes, that's seven nines. Um, and that will effectively deal with the bacteria and the viruses as well. Great, Martin. It sounds like you've got a big back, a large background. I know you've done a lot of work in some of these critical areas. So I guess let's get started off on these air purifiers, these in-room air purifiers. Can you give us a, a quick broad overview of what we're talking about when we say in-room air purifier? Sure, uh, in general, a uh, room air purifier is, is a smaller, usually portable device um, equipped with a fan that draws air in from one side, goes through multiple filter steps and basically clean air comes out um, the other side. Um, what's particularly interesting about these devices is that they're, they can be on the room side of the contaminant space. So for example, if you're in a classroom and you've got um, uh, someone who sneezes in there and uh, you know, the, the room air purifier is in the room, it could effectively take care of that uh, potential risk much quicker than maybe a systems HVAC can. Um, otherwise, it's a unit that draws air in, cleans it, puts it back into space, and that will take care of what, um, anything that might be harmful or suspended in the air. Okay, great, good overview. So then I heard you as you were talking, I, I was thinking that you said three different things. You said the units, they bring air in, they filter the air, and then they exhaust air. So let's kind of break that down and cover each one. When you talk about bringing air in, what can you tell us about those components as uh, that, that process to draw the air into these purifiers? Okay, well, um, effectively these portable air uh, room purifiers, what they are um, is, is, you know, there's a fan that's inside these units. That fan draws the air inside uh, from the room space itself. Um, it's not going through exterior space. You're really focusing on the area that uh, you want to take care of or treat. Um, a lot of people use these for personal use, but they're larger industrial uh, versions as well. And in effect, you're pulling that dirty air in um, going through multiple filter stages and those filter stages, which is part of the second step, um, can be a combination of varying technologies. Most often people would associate a HEPA filter. That's a high efficiency particle arresting filter. Uh, that's where the term HEPA comes from. Um, you would be cleaning that. Sometimes you might have carbon filters and some other technologies around that to treat that air and then that filter will 
take out the particles and then clean air comes out the other side in an exhaust by uh, same primary me method through the fan of the unit. Okay, so Martin, when you draw the air in, um, is there, a, how do you size that? In other words, uh, you know, classrooms are various sizes, is office are different sizes, you know, a hospital room is one size. So is there a way to select which particular air purifier is appropriate for your use? Yeah, there is. It comes down to the size of the room that you're in, number one. Um, so the cubic dimension of the room by measuring the height, the width, and the length. And then we calculate the, uh, or, or observe the CFM that's capable of the unit itself. CFM is uh, cubic feet per minute. So in one cubic foot per minute is roughly the size of a basketball. So in theory, a 500 CFM unit is delivering 500 basketball size units of air every single minute. So if you take your CFM per hour, which is at, you know, times 60 divided by the cubic feet of that room, the height, the width and the length, you effectively have, um, you know, an idea of how many air changes you can achieve in that particular space. So I've, in, in past um, discussions, air changes per hour is very important. And there's been one of the other defenses people have talked about against COVID is uh, better ventilation in inside areas. So if you're set up in a room where your, your HVAC system is already specced in and it's changing the air over, let's say six times an hour, and you've got a, a air purifier that is specced and it can change, let's say four times per hour. Is there a multiplying effect? In other words, if you have a room like that with six in your unit, four with your air purifier, are you, are you approaching then 10 air changes per hour in that space? Yeah, depending on the CFM of the unit and the volume of air you have to cover, I mean, that, that's a fair parallel. Um, I think you need to consider that most HVAC systems were not designed to handle very high efficiency or higher um, uh, MERV filters uh, that are being discussed. Sometimes there's a penalty and a restriction to air for that. Um, you know, you might be surprised that many commercial buildings only deliver one to two air changes an hour, for example. So I think that uh, if you're lucky enough to have six, and your system is not able to overcome the resistance of a higher efficiency filter in there, then an air purifier is a great um, complement to be able to increase the, uh, the air in the space. Um, and so uh, therefore that's, you would have a stacking effect. So the more units, the more air you can deliver, the more often you can clean the air through the unit itself. Okay, great. So there is a somewhat of a stacking effect. That's good to know. And you had mentioned HEPA filter. Now we've heard this phrase and I've heard this often, maybe you've heard it too, and that's the term true HEPA. Is true HEPA, is that phrase, is that a real technical term? And if it is or if it isn't, what really is meant behind that phrase true HEPA? And can you get to a purifier that actually has a real true HEPA filter? In? Uh, so I'll answer the first part. The term HEPA is a very overused and sometimes under understood uh, concept, a true absolute HEPA filter will have a minimum efficiency of 99.97% at 0 0.03 microns. Uh, to put that in perspective, the width of a spider's web is about 10 microns. And so therefore you probably have about 25,000 microns uh, inside the, the, you know, the size of an inch. So we're talking about extremely small particles um, that we cannot see, but a, a real certified, tested, tried and true HEPA filter should meet at least that minimum requirement. Um, by definition, what is a true HEPA filter? Well, I guess that depends on the person who's doing their homework. We can either believe the uh, marketing materials or we can look to make sure that you have certificates of conformance and test reports that come with those units. Um, you could buy HEPA rated media, but that doesn't make it a true HEPA filter. And that filter is only ever gonna be as good as the mechanism that supports it, by the way. So if it's not seated or sealed properly, there's bypass issues. And then if something comes around the filter, it's not being cleaned or treated. And then therefore you might have some issues. So I would always recommend and reach out to your local air um, filtration expert and we can help walk through to see if we can make sure that those claims are, um, are legitimate. Yeah, that, that's true, Martin. I've, I, I think I've heard you say, in fact, before that the best filter in the world is only half as good if it's not sealed properly. So, um, okay, so we kind of covered two things. That's the air intake, how to size them and, and things like that. Then we cover a little bit about the different filter options. Now, what benefits are there? I mean, obviously we're talking about uh, COVID-19 because that's the pandemic that we're in right now, but you were mentioning HEPA filters. So, and, and the, the, the small particles that HEPA filters can capture, which by the way, 
the, uh, the respiratory droplets are magnitudes larger than what a HEPA filter can actually uh, capture. So what benefits do we get from air purifiers outside of our topic of COVID-19? Well, I mean, there's definitely several links and they're well-documented, well-researched by plenty of smarter scientific minds than myself here. Uh, we know that there's um, great relative effect with uh, better air quality and less pollution in the air and that we can live longer and have fewer adverse health effects. We can have better cognitive performance in classrooms, for example, in a well-ventilated, well-filtered installation of a school. Um, so long before this pandemic and long after, um, we need to make sure that the best quality of air um, is supported by the, you know, the, the, the full ability of the units themselves. And um, I, I should point out here, you know, why a HEPA filter is so effective against, you know, COVID-19 or viruses is, um, is really just a measure of the straining that um, a HEPA filter doesn't kill the virus, but it will trap it in a net in a net so that you will effectively, you know, it will sit there and die. The many, many layers of, of a HEPA filter will make sure that it gets captured and doesn't come out on the other side. Great, okay, one, one other thought I had, we, we were talking, going back to the first thing about um, uh, the performance factors of, of purifiers when they draw in and how the fan works. Fans cost money to operate. So are, are do these cost a lot of money? Is the, is the operational cost excessive on these? No, I guess in relation to a traditional HVAC system here, I um, mean, if you add higher efficiency filtration, there might be an energy penalty in order to do so. Um, this is a plug and play system, very low power consumption, many costs less than $50 a year to operate in terms of energy. So if you offset that with a huge retrofit expense of uh, making your mechanical system um, improvements, this becomes a very, very low cost um, unit to run. In fact, you can get systems that run uh, several thousand CFM and, and are very, very low energy providers or consumers rather by contrast. Okay, so another way to put that would be that there really isn't a downside or, or maybe I'll put that in a form of a question. Is there a downside to using an air purifier or is it a case where it can only do good? Now there's obviously quality differences between them, but is it fair to say there's no downside to, to putting in a uh, air purifier in your room? I don't see much. I mean, other than the fact that you might bump your toe on it when you're trying to get around a room or something like that. For me, the peace of mind of seeing and hearing a portable air purifier in the space that I'm in would make me feel a lot more comfortable as a parent if, my, if and when my, my young children decide to go back to school. Um, so I think, you know, even if those were there long after this, um, this pandemic, I would be much happier going to a place where I knew that the air quality was better because we know that that's an important thing. And if we consider that we have all kinds of regulations around uh, clean water, I mean, why shouldn't we consider making clean air a human right as well? Great, uh, excellent point, Martin, and that's, that's true. Okay, so in, in summary, an air purifier is relatively inexpensive. Uh, it, it has the ability to um, uh, add to your air changes per hour in a particular space, and it can certainly filter out not just the respiratory droplets that may or may not be responsible for COVID-19 infection rates, but also other particles as well. And as Martin said, if you have a HEPA filter, then you're, uh, you're going to pull out the very, very smallest particles, as you said, that that can affect learning and cognitive ability and things like that. That's been proven for decades. Well, Martin, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. This is an important topic. Air purifiers are on everybody's mind because everyone's looking for a way to add that extra level of defense against uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So Martin, we appreciate your time, thank you. Yeah, always a pleasure. And uh, the last thing I just wanna leave, make sure that you do your homework on these things. Uh, it's a very, very uh, convoluted space. Um, a quick air purifier a search, uh, engine search will show over 62 million results. So please reach out to the air filter professionals. We can help uh, guide you through what is a good unit. And sometimes uh, the ones that cost a little more upfront will give you the greatest benefit. And uh, we're not in a situation these days where we can afford to just put a Band-Aid solution on uh, something that's very much uh, graver than that. Thank you.